Hi, my name is Jason Nash and I'm the Data Center Practice Director for Vero and today we're going to do a quick demonstration of how to configure Amazon Glacier Backup from your Synology NAS. So I've been doing a couple of these videos and, and a few people asked me to do one on Glacier since that's a, kind of a newer offering and something a lot of people are interested in. So with that, we'll go ahead, we'll jump into the lab. I'm going to use two of my Synologies, one I've already got running Glacier, one that will do the install. And then I'll show you how to kind of log in and do everything that you need to do. So first let's log into Unicron. He is again my 3611, the big guy. So we'll go ahead and log in here. One thing, uh, in another video I did a backup of iSCSI lines. And you can also do data backups in there. And I want to warn you about something. So let me go here, backup and restore, create a job, do a data backup task. And it'll say here's what we're going to do in the wizard again. If we hit next it'll say name and here you can pick your type. Now a lot of people get confused because there's an option here for Amazon S3 backup. S3 is an Amazon cloud storage service that predates Glacier. In fact Glacier uh, rides on top of Amazon's S3. But keep in mind that you can back up to S3 but S3 is a good bit more expensive. So they've tuned some things, changed the thing, productized it a bit different to make Glacier and the price is significantly cheap with Glacier. So don't come in here and do S3 unless you specifically need for some reason to back up to directly to the S3 service. So I just wanted to warn you about that if you start poking around and you happen to see that. So we'll cancel. So the first thing we need to do is actually install the Glacier package. So we'll go to the package center. And your package center may look different if you're still in 4.1. This guy here is running the 4.2 beta. It, it just all depends. And let's see, we need to do a few things. Now first of all, you will need to install Python. So Python on mine is already installed, but let me actually remove that. Let me do an action and let me do an uninstall real quick. So Python is kind of a, it's a object-oriented programming language and Glacier uses that. So the only reason I'm uninstalling is I just want to show you that you can install first. So if you go to backup option here, Glacier and say install, it'll say hey you need to do Python. So to the Synology people, if you're seeing this, it'd be nice if you could say, hey, you got a dependency on Python, do you want me to go ahead and install that? But it's not a big deal. Then you just come back in here, say I want to install Python. It'll connect to Synology's MyDS Center. Ask me which volume to install it on. Pick one with appropriate disk space. Uh, volume 1 or some EFDs or SSDs, I guess we'll say. Volume 2 are just regular disks, so I'm going to put it on there, not waste the flash space tells you a bit about the package and then you just apply it. So it'll go ahead, it'll download and then it'll install and then you can go ahead and install Glacier. So give that one second and we're done. Python is installed. So now let's go back to backup and Glacier. Again the 4.1 uh, package center isn't broken down as easy as this. You may have to scroll down but Glacier's in there as well. Same thing here. Pick a volume for the install package. It'll tell you a bit. Go ahead and tell it to run after installation. You don't want to just install it. You want to be able to run it and manage it. So we'll hit apply. And it'll do the same thing. It'll download the Glacier backup package, uh, install it, kick it off, and get ready. And it puts an icon right here in your main window for Glacier. So now let's jump over to the other one that I've already got it running on with some stuff to actually back up. And I'll go ahead and log in. we can see here I've already got Glacier running and I've already got one job that's failed it was actually actually backing trying to back up the iSCSI LUN backup files from the other video I did and it didn't like some things that changed in the middle of the backup so no big deal but here's the interface for Glacier backup so it gives you your status tells you your last time your backup if you're doing scheduled backups any restores that are in progress and here on the left you can create backups restores or look at logs like we see here where I had an error on my demo LUN backup. So keep in mind of a few things. Uh, Glacier charges on a per terabyte or actually per gigabyte basis uh, monthly and so I believe it's like 10 bucks per terabyte is what it works out to a dollar per or a, a penny per gig or something like that and it also depends on where you're at in the world and what backup targets you're going to use so I'll show you that in a minute but you also want to keep in mind that you know these things can change 
Uh, so pricing may change and you just want to make sure you understand that. Over on the right, uh, we you do need to create an Amazon Web Services account. So you just got to look at that. So we can just do Glacier here. The, all Your account is the same for all your web services. So you create one account and you can use pretty much anything you want here. Spin up virtual machines, use S3, use Glacier, whatever. It's all under the same account. If you look here at Glacier pricing, we'll see that. So first of all, storage is one penny per gig per month. So you add that up, it's 10 bucks a terabyte a month. But if we change it, so that's if I store it in US East and I'm in North Carolina. So maybe I say, you know what, if something really bad happens, uh, maybe I want my data in Ireland. Well, now it's 0.011. Not a big deal, but it is a change. Tokyo, data center space in Tokyo costs more than it does in Virginia, and that cost goes up a little bit as well. So be aware of that. And then be aware of retrievals. So the idea is that um, Glacier is really meant to store data long term and not do a lot of retrievals. So just keep that in mind and it breaks down your pricing here. And here at the bottom, there they list transfer pricing, but there's, you know, basically anything in is free, so they don't charge you for data going into Glacier. Out from Glacier, so if you're doing it to an EC2 instance or another AWS region if you're moving stuff around, but if you're just pulling it back out from Glacier to the internet, you know, first gig a month is nothing. Then you go up to terabyte a month, it's 0.12 per gig. So again, the idea is put data into Glacier, very seldom do restores. Uh, that will cause your, your pricing to go up. The only thing they don't have is a great way to kind of break down what you're being charged for over time. There's no simple, uh, at least that I've seen, console for that yet, but I, I believe that'll be here soon. So back to what we were doing. Let's go ahead and create a backup job. So we're going to create. It'll tell you what the wizard's going to do again. Next, create a backup set. So we'll do Glacier Video Demo. And it says, hey, don't blame us if you go nuts with this thing and your price goes up and you get charged a lot of money. So the idea here is, you know, suggest archiving files for compression so you use less space. But again, fees are charged by Amazon. It's not up to Synology or anything like that. So make sure you understand that. Next. And then you need your access key and your secret key and which region you're going to push data to. So back to our our account. So let me go to my, let's see, it's under security credentials. Let me log in. Now I'm going to show you my keys and then I'm going to revoke them when this video is done. So I don't really care if you see them. But if you scroll down you'll see access keys and you'll see your access ID. So I'll copy that. Paste that there. And then you need your secret key. This is the one that you shouldn't be seeing, but again, I'm just going to revoke it. Copy. Paste. And then I'll region, I'll just do US East. Next. It'll confirm that, make sure the keys that you just gave it were correct. And then it says, what do you want me to back up? So I'll back up my Zerto directory. Next. And it says, do you want to schedule? This is just like the other backup videos and demos I've done. You basically can schedule this. You can do an, you know, do a basic schedule, do an advanced schedule, or just say, you know, eh, I'm gonna kick this off manually. And you can also say after this job is done, go ahead and start backing up. So we'll say next. It'll say here's your wizard. Apply it, and off it goes. And that's how you set up a Glacier backup. It's really simple. Uh, the only reason I don't use Glacier is I've been a crash plan user for quite a while. All my other systems go to crash plan, so I use the headless crash plan uh, client for Synology, and maybe I'll do a video for that one next since it's pretty popular. But I, I have to admit, this is a pretty slick interface. So you're going to start seeing things kick up and go in the background. If you want to do a restore, you come here to restore, click restore, and I'm not sure I got data up there, so let's take a look. And it says which from which existing task we'll do the one that I had running before and you want to overwrite files and it never actually finished so it won't let me but normally you would say yes or no to overwrite and then pick your folder go next and it's going to let you finish so you know select a content and restore the shared folder and you'd be done really simple uh, it's a great way to back up your one or more Synologies to a, a pretty cheap uh, d uh, destination pretty easy to manage uh, and it's a great, you know, the problem is 
I talk to people all the time with boxes like this or you know million dollar storage arrays it doesn't matter and they feel like things like raid and snapshots and all that protect them but if somebody broke in my house and stole this Synology box or there was a fire or something just happened to some of the drives in it I'm out so you still need to do good backups of your data and that's what you can do with Glacier so that's it for the demo look forward to seeing you on the next one